Procreate can be a very useful tool for artists, but with all the hand gestures and icons on the screen, sometimes it can be a bit hard to remember all of the things that they do. And because of that, maybe you're missing out on some of the options that are available to you. So today I've got some of my favorite features from Procreate that just help me save time and they also help me just add that little bit extra to my work. Now this video won't be showing you all of the features of Procreate, I'll just be showing you the ones that I find the most useful and when you look at it as a whole that is still an awful lot. And with that being said, let's get into it. So first thing I actually want to talk about is canvases and layers and how they can be useful. So when you first click on Procreate, you're going to see this screen. The first thing that we do is we're going to need to create a new canvas. So what you want to do is you want to click the plus symbol in the top right corner. That will open up a menu. Now you will be given some options already like A4 and things like that. We're just going to click A4 for the purpose of this video. Once the canvas opens up, you can start drawing straight away. If we want to delete this canvas, we just click on gallery. And then we just hit select up in the top right corner, select the one we want to delete, and then in the top right corner, hit delete. It'll ask you again, hit delete again, and there it goes. Now you'll also notice that there is what we call stacks right here. This can just help when you're working on different projects and it helps keep everything together, but separate from everything else as well. Easy way to create one of those is we take one finger and we hold it down on one and we move it across over another one. You'll see that one turn blue. If you let go, it creates a stack. Once that stack's created, you can hit the stack and then you can rename it whatever you want. Hit enter, it renames it. If you've put a piece into the wrong stack, you can then do the same gesture, press and hold and move it to work. It will then bring up your gallery and just drag and drop. There you go. This can come in handy because if you're anything like me, you've got work all over the place, canvases all over the place, and you're not too sure which one's which and which one has which piece in it. So this can keep everything bunched together and it just helps you out in the long run. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is layers. Now, layers are really important because they allow you to work on different parts of your work without affecting other sections of it too. Now, to create a new layer, all you do is hit the layers tab in the top right corner. You hit the plus icon and it adds another layer. This can be useful because if we were to draw something on the first layer and then go to the second layer and draw something else, if I make a mistake on the second layer, then I can rub out the second layer without affecting the first. To delete an unwanted layer, you just go to the layers tab again, swipe to the left on the unwanted tab and hit delete. Now let's say I have drawn something on layer one and I want to make a duplicate of this layer. I just go back to layers, slide to the left again and hit duplicate and it'll make an exact copy of that layer. And I will be coming back to why this is important later on. If you don't want to delete a layer, but you want to hide a layer for whatever reason, then all you do is you just click the layers tab again. There you'll find a small box with a tick inside, tap that and it will hide the layer without actually deleting it. This just makes the layer invisible. Similar to this, you have an option to play with the opacity. All you do within the layers tab is you'll find a small N or a small letter, you click that. You'll find an option for the opacity and you can just drag the slider to determine how visible you want that layer. Now for this part, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a few layers and if you find yourself with multiple projects on the same canvas, then you might find it useful to create a group of layers. To do this, all you need to do is do the same thing as we did before. Tap and hold. Hold it over one of the layers that you want to group it with. And release. This creates a new group. You can then also add other layers to that group as well by doing the same thing. While these layers are all grouped together, you can hide the entire group by tapping the little tick on the layer. This will hide every layer and just make it easier to flip back and forth between projects. For the next part, I'm just gonna go to layer five. I'm just gonna write the names on the layers. We go to layer six, layer seven. Now, as you can see, all of these layers are currently working independently from one another. I would make sure all of these layers are above and below each other. And I can group, start to group them all together by going to the top one and hitting merge down. If I hit merge down again, this merges those layers together, making one layer. I can then control that layer just by doing this. Or if I want to save time, I can take two fingers 
go to the top and bottom layer and pinch together. This creates the one layer and I can control it from there. Next on my list of things that you might find useful is the alpha lock. Because for those of you who have had Procreate for a while, we all know the pain of shading or colouring in an entire piece, only to find out that you've been drawn on the wrong layer. And usually by this point it's too late, so you have to undo absolutely everything you've just done. So this is just a little tip that might stop you throwing your iPad at the wall and might save you a little bit of money. All you do is you go to layers, click on the layer, you'll find an option that says alpha lock. And if I try to draw on this now, nothing happens. But if I go to another layer, I can draw. Easy way to find out whether the alpha lock is on is when the alpha lock is on, the layer thumbnail will have a bit of a checkerboard pattern in the background just to let you know that, well, it's off limits. Another option that you might find useful is the reference option. Now, for those of you that don't know what reference does, reference just basically makes it a hell of a lot easier to keep within the lines of an outline on another layer. For example, if I go to the outline layer and hit reference and then go to layer two, I can then drag and drop into that layer right there. I can then use the outline from the first layer as a reference for the second. Let me just show you if I was to use it without the reference. If I went to layer two without reference, it will cover the entire page. Now for the next part, I want to come away from the uh, canvas and layers features and what I want to do is I want to talk about gestures. Gestures can actually save you a lot of time while you're drawing. Sometimes the options that you're looking for are hidden away or they just don't exist. But if you press the screen in the right way, sometimes this unlocks a feature that you didn't know you had at your disposal. So the first gesture I want to talk about is the two finger press, which if I made a mistake, take two fingers, press on the screen, this will then undo what I've just done. If I make multiple mistakes, I can then press as many times with two fingers as I need to. If you've just undone a bunch of things and you want to bring one thing back, you can press with three fingers. This will redo what you've just undone. While we're on the subject of undoing and redoing things, an important side note is if you go back to gallery, this will then save the piece, meaning that if you go back to the original drawing and you want to undo anything, it won't. This is why it's always important to make sure that everything you do is on another layer. Next is the pinch and zoom, which is two fingers again. Place and hold. You can pinch to zoom in or zoom out, or you can rotate your fingers to rotate the canvas. Another option is that if we've made a mistake on a certain layer and we want to just delete the entire layer, you can take three fingers, place them on the screen and scribble back and forward. This deletes everything off layer. This won't delete the layer, but it'll delete everything on the layer. Another gesture which I find useful is if I take three fingers, place them on the screen and swipe down, you'll be given the copy and paste options. Anytime you copy and paste anything, it will create another layer under the name inserted image. This option comes in handy when you're playing about with a certain layer and you're not too sure if you have the right idea in mind. So you can always play about with different ideas on duplicate layers. Now, if you like to work without distractions, then another thing that you can do is work without the interface. To do this, all you need to do is take four fingers and tap, the interface goes away. To bring it back, all you need to do is take the same four fingers and tap again. Something else I find useful is in layers. There is a gesture to play about with the opacity of that layer. You go to layers, two finger press on that layer. It brings up a opacity bar across the top. And all you do is just drag that bar to wherever you feel you need it. And the last one that I find quite useful is the two press hold. If I then press and hold the layer, it will select absolutely everything on that layer. Now that we've talked about gestures, I want to talk about brushes. Now, because people are used to drawing on paper and feeling the resistance of the paper against the pen, sometimes drawing on a screen can be a bit hard and this results in shaky lines. Now, I've been asked in the comments on my previous videos on how to actually stop this, and it's easy. Click on your brushes, bring up your brush library, and let's say we want to edit the technical pen. We just 
click on the technical pin. This brings up the brush studio. And what you wanna do is you wanna look for an option on the left hand side called stabilization. If we click that, you'll see an option for stabilization. I usually have mine quite low because at this point I'm kind of used to using uh, iPads. But you'll see how if I don't base my hand on the screen and I just draw, try to draw a straight line, you'll see every little jitter. But if I take the amount up to about 86 and I try to draw a straight line, it becomes a lot straighter. And as you can see, if I were to do a curve, it smooths it out as I'm going. Whereas if I take the stabilization all the way down, you see the initial jitter here and here. Usually I have mine around about 15. Some people usually put it around about 50, which is really gonna smooth those lines. And it's gonna help a lot with curves too. Now, another side note, if you do wanna go down the rabbit hole of um, editing your brushes and things like that, I would definitely consider making a duplicate of those brushes that you're editing, as there is only options to restore all settings. There is nothing to undo what you've just done. So the best way to do it is to actually duplicate that brush. To do this, all that you do is that you just highlight the brush that you wanna edit, uh, slide to the left, you will find a Share Duplicate and Reset option. If you duplicate that pen, all it'll do is it'll create an exact copy of that pen right above it. Another thing that people sometimes have problems with are straight lines, but Procreate has you covered there as well. If you take your pen and you draw a straight line and you hold the pen at the end without taking it off the screen, it does this. Procreate will then correct the line like this creating a perfect straight line. You can then move it around to dictate where you want the straight line to go. And you can confirm it by just lifting the pen. This technique also works for doing perfect circles, triangles, squares, and curves as well. For example, if I draw a circle, it will create an ellipse. But if I take my other finger and I place it on the screen while holding the pen down, it will create a perfect circle. I can then confirm that circle by lifting the pen. The exact same thing goes for squares and triangles. It's that easy. As for curves, curves are exactly the same. If I were to do this, it will correct it, but if it's leaning off to one side a bit more than the other, if I take my finger, place it on the screen, then we end up with this. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is saving brush sizes. Now, if you're anything like me, you're constantly changing the size of your brushes, but you can't remember the percentage of the size that you were using about five minutes ago. So one thing that can make it easy to switch back and forward between pen sizes is you can save up to four different pen sizes on Procreate. Let's say I want to save 5%. All I want to do is tap the plus icon in the top corner. And all this does is it leaves a marker so that I can go back to it later. Now let's save another one. And to switch back and forward, all I do is I just tap them, making it so much easier to switch back and forward. Like I said, you can save up to four of these. If you wanna save another one, but you've used up all of your spaces, you can delete one just by clicking on the tab again, and you just hit the minus icon. All right, now let's talk about color swatches, which as you can see, I have a few, but the easiest way to actually create a palette same kind of thing as if I was to create a layer. Um, as we go to palettes, create add, add a new palette. Now what we do to save one is we can select a certain color. Let's say we wanna go for this kind of nuclear green. Go straight to palette and we just tap the first box. That will create a color. And let's say we wanna make a whole palette of greens then we can just go to there. Let's make another one a little bit lighter. Go back to the palettes and hit that one. Make another one a bit lighter. Now you can also edit the name of the palette. I can also share it with people. I can duplicate it and I can delete it. Another thing that people uh, specializing in color might find interesting with the colors is if I go to the colors up here, 
Now you'll find just underneath colors, it says complementary. This just gives me two colors to choose from that will both complement each other really well. If I click on complementary, you'll see it gives me some options. As you can see, it will also give me two other colors here and here that will help complement that color within a piece. Now, this is a great option for anyone that specializes in color, as the complementary colors that they'll give you do exactly that. They complement each other. And it's just another option for you to actually showcase what you can do. Now, let's say you've got a canvas with a bunch of different colors on it, or that you've uploaded an image and you find it a hard to color match. An easy way to find that color and color match is if you take your finger and press and hold on a certain color, you'll find a wheel pops up like this. And if you watch the top right corner, when I release my finger, the color that I now have selected is this color. Now, one of the last things that I wanna bring up are drawing guides. Drawing guides can be extremely useful. To access the drawing guides, you go to the actions icon, click on canvas, you will see an option for drawing guide. When you toggle this option, you'll see a grid. But if we look just underneath the drawing guide, you'll see an option for edit drawing guide. You'll see that a bunch of other options come up. And one of the ones that I use the most would be symmetry. When you're done, hit done. Now this only works for that layer that you're working on. And all I do is I go to layers and I just make sure that that layer says assisted underneath. And anything I do on one side will repeat on the other. Now if I create another layer, and I draw on that one, nothing happens. But if I want this layer assisted as well, all I do is tap layer two to bring up the options for that layer. And I find the option that says draw and assist. I just click that one and that one will say assisted as well. And there we go. The final thing that I'll mention that I really think will help a lot of people is the brush library and the color swatches come standard but you can find and download other ones on the internet completely free now if you go to the procreate website in discussions there are options to go into uh, resources and these are just things that people have made and are giving away for free this includes brushes and color swatches so i would highly recommend you take full advantage of this and if you make anything yourself like color swatches and brushes I would highly recommend you upload them yourself to see what other people can do with those things, but you will find an absolutely unreal amount of resources on this page. As you scroll down, you will see that a lot of them will tell you exactly what it is. Um, they will either say brushes or swatches next to them, but I would highly recommend taking a look at this and seeing if you can find any resources that you would find useful in that. I will leave a link in the description for this for anyone that thinks they might find this useful. And I guess really that's it. Those are my most used features of Procreate. People have been asking me about certain things to do with Procreate and I just wanted to make this video just so that you guys could see how I use Procreate. As always, I hope this helps. If you found this helpful, then please leave a comment down below. Or if you think that I should have mentioned something that I didn't, then please mention that as well. If you have any questions, then always feel free to comment or message me on my Instagram. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.